Welcome to our Power Plays of the Week. I'm Jeff Power for Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. 10 to 6, your final score here at Bulldog Stadium. Laporte beats their arch rival Deer Park. And you got to understand, this series for six consecutive years now has been settled by less than a touchdown. It all came down to one key play in the final seconds. Roll the highlights. The Laporte Bulldogs played great defense and lined up for the win against arch rival Deer Park in the District 21 6A opener. Laporte's James Jacobs bulldogs his way into the end zone from a yard out in the final 12 seconds for a key District 21 6A win, 10 to 6. The Bulldogs hand Deer Park their first loss in five games, improving to 3 and 2, and most importantly, 1 and 0 in district. Dickinson was hosting Clear Lake. Gators head coach John Snelson played college football at Air Force, and his team was flying high. Check out the block punt by Devin Hudson and the nice boot by Kefren Weidemeyer, and watch as number 14 returns it in for a touchdown. The Gators won all three phases of the game. They even had a goal line stand on defense. When Dickinson was on offense, they scored early and often, putting up 28 points on the board against the Falcons in the first half, as Dickinson quarterback Cameron Martin was part of six touchdowns. Gators win it 49-7 to improve to 4-0. The Bel Air Cardinals were hosting Houston Reagan, and I've got two names for you in this game. Bel Air quarterback Trevin Smith and his favorite target on this night, Cardinal receiver Courtney Lark. He caught four touchdown passes, including TD pass plays of 16, 25, 56, and 26 yards. Bel Air held off a late Reagan rally for a 35 to 28 victory. Now to the DFW Metroplex, where Abilene traveled to South Lake Carroll as Dragons head coach Hal Wasson was seeking his 200th career win, while Steve Warren was seeking career win number 186. Quite a history between these two legendary Texas powerhouses, as Carroll had won eight state titles compared to seven for Abilene. Both had appeared in nine state championship games with Abilene holding the edge in overall wins at 652. To their first regular season meeting between the two teams, Abram Smith scored on Abilene's first three drives for touchdowns in the first half. He finished with 137 yards in the game, but he was surpassed in points scored by South Lake Carroll running back Jordan Humphrey, who had 105 yards and four touchdowns. Ryan Agnew would leave the game with an injury, but the backup quarterback, Montana Murphy, stepped up with three touchdown passes in relief of the QB and had 103 all-purpose yards. Carroll recorded over 600 yards of total offense. They win it 63-28. to The Arlington Lamar Vikings played crosstown rival Martin. Check out the interception by Nick Albus as he takes it to the house. Martin scored 29 points in the first quarter alone and never looked back, winning at 67 to 20. Lindsey Knights and Munster Hornets squaring off in the annual Kraut Bowl. Both teams were undefeated coming in. Hornets using the screen pass here as Blaine Jones connects with Dalton Bartell. First down, but the drive would end in a fumble as Lindsey's Matt Block comes up with a big hit and recovery. The Knights were in business, Caleb Anderley takes the toss left and he's gone for six. Lindsay remains unbeaten at 4-0 with a 13-7 victory. Defending 3A Division II state champion Argyle traveled to Paris to take on the Wildcats. It was the Eagles soaring early as Cooper Rogers tosses the deep ball to Dane Ledford. He catches it in stride and is in for an Argyle score. Just before the half, Paris quarterback Quez Allen takes the snap, almost gets sacked, but refuses to go down. He scrambles and finds his way for a Wildcat touchdown. Argyle's offense was just too strong though. Rogers avoids a defender and lofts it up to Drew Estrada and he takes it in for another Eagle touchdown. Argyle wins it 38 to 14 to remain unbeaten, tied with Sanger for the class 4A division one district six lead. The Denison Yellow Jackets were hosting the Lovejoy Leopards at Munson Stadium. Lovejoy using the direct snap as Hunter Pop scores for a 7-0 Leopards lead. Lovejoy would score 55 points in the game and hang on for a 55-42 victory over Denison. Let's head east as Ennis traveled to Jacksonville. The Lions roared out to a big lead early as Taylor Thompson scores from 36 yards out on the TD run. Ennis has some talented skill players. Check out the pass from Devin Smith to Destin Johnson, who was destined to catch the ball up high. Look at that, nice footwork, he's in bounds. Turn on those afterburners and look at him go, 68 yards for a touchdown. 
The Lions would go on to win 42 to 24 over Jacksonville to make it two straight victories with first place in District 16 5A on the line against undefeated Nacogdoches next Friday. Vista Ridge squared off with Eastview at Berkelbach Stadium in Georgetown in a battle of unbeatens in District 25 5A. Matthew Snow came to play. Check out this run as the Vista Ridge quarterback goes 77 yards to the house. The Rangers held on for a 35-32 win over Eastview, handing the Patriots their first loss of the season. The 5-0 Rangers host 4-1 Vandergrip October 10th in a battle for first in district. Let's stay in 25-5A for a minute. Cedar Park was hosting undefeated Georgetown. Timberwolves quarterback Amir Alzira with a strike to Davis Fiala for a 19-yard TD. Georgetown answered a bit later on special teams. Check out the kickoff return by Jamel Powell. He will race 97 yards before it's all said and done. Yeah, we need to speed him up a little bit, don't we? Cedar Park got a touchdown from Chris Hutchings from five yards out, and they held on to win 31 to 28 to improve the three and two as Georgetown falls to four and one. Del Valley traveled to Lake Travis Cavalier ISD Stadium. All Cavs in this one. Lake Travis scored early and often. Abe Willows takes the handoff, finds a hole, and he's gone 57 yards for a touchdown, putting the Cavaliers on the board in just 20 seconds. Dominic Delira is back at quarterback for LT after suffering an injury earlier in the season. Here he finds Connor Oates for a score. It was that kind of night for LT. How about some tomfoolery, you ask? Well, here's a top 10 nominee for power plays of the week. Cade Green takes the snap, pitches it to Hudson Fife, who then tosses it to Dominic Delera, who somehow gets his feet inbounds for the touchdown. Lake Travis wins it 55 to nothing. Waco traveled to Maynard to play the Mustangs. Maynard head coach Sad Jackson was happy about the performance of his Mustangs. Jonathan Sawyer got things off to a great start with a 59-yard punt return for a TD to make it 7-0 Maynard. Lindemann Brooks takes the pitch here for Maynard, gets a few blocks, and he's off to the races. How elusive can you be? Brooks races 54 yards for a touchdown as the Mustangs scored 21 points in the first quarter alone. Maynard QB Jamel Collins had a pair of TDs, including the touchdown pass to Cameron Harrison as the Mustangs win it 27 to nothing. The Refurio Bobcats battling the Cameron Yo Yeoman. Refurio head coach Jason Herring looking to lead his number one ranked Bobcats to the victory. First quarter, Yeoman go for it on fourth and seven from the Refurio 36. Jacob Smitterman to Jordan Wells, who dives for the first. Later in the drive, Yeoman, they go for the field goal, but the snap is high, and Austin Moya comes flying in for the block. Bobcats coming up big with this play on special teams. That would lead to this Jalen Mascaro over the middle to a wide open Tyler Castellano. Extra point, no good, 6 0 Refurio. Yeoman struggling on offense in the first half. Aaron Sims on the reverse. He's stuffed. Yo with 157 yards of offense compared to Refurio's 423 at the break. Mascaro adds a rushing touchdown to make it 12 0. Refurio led 20 7 at the break and ended up winning 27 20 to improve to 4 0, dropping the Yeoman to 2 3. Let's head down to Victoria where it was East versus West. The East, the home team, the West, the visiting team. Both coming in with identical 3-1 records, both 1-1 one one in district play. The Warriors going for their second straight win over the Titans after East won the first three matchups. A flyover from Citizens Medical Center before an overflow crowd at Memorial Stadium. Hey, we're ready for some football, aren't you? Titans get the ball first, and Bailey Zappi pitches it back to Jonathan Ortega, and we have a little trickeration. Ortega goes deep to Dylan Lippy. Look at that, he's got it. 43 yard gain to the West 31 yard line. Later in the drive, Ortega, quick slant, Chance McLeod, eight yard touchdown. Titans take the quick seven, nothing lead. That's the way it stood after a quarter. Middle of the second now, East on the march again. Zappi to Lippy for 21 to the East 31 yard line. Then Zappi rolls one way, turns the other and finds McLeod for 25 more to the West 28. Later in the drive, Ortega back in at quarterback. He's rolling out, looking for the end zone, looking for Lippy. He's got it. Boom, sandwiched by two Warriors, and Lippy holds on for a 24-yard touchdown catch. After a few seconds down, Lippy would get up and walk off without help. East up 14-0. Warriors trying to get something going before halftime. Jamarcus Gurdy is picked off. Trey Martinez will take it all the way back for a Titan touchdown. 62-yard run back. Victoria East took a 21-0 lead into the third quarter, only to have West rally for 21 points of their own. 
However, East added a field goal and held on for a 24-21 victory over rival Victoria West. The Yoakum Bulldogs and the Gonzalez Apaches keeping their long-standing rivalry going. Well, early in the first period, Apache ball quarterback Grant Philippus hands the ball to tailback Elias Ramirez, and he rumbles around the right side, getting to the corner and gaining 40 before he's tackled ahead of bounds to set up quarterback Philippus with the three-yard touchdown keeper. The PAT is good. Apache's up 7-0. Then it's the Bulldogs' time to strike back. All-around quarterback Trevante Heights fakes the handoff, tucks the ball away, and he's going to take the ball untouched in what looks like a sure touchdown, but the officials called him out of bounds at the three. So two plays later, it's Heights in for the score. PA2 was good, and it was tied 7-7. Yoakum outscored Gonzalez in the second half 31 to nothing and went on to win 51 to 26 to improve to 4 and 1. To the Rio Grande Valley now, first up, it's the Port Isabel Tarpons going to work with their great ground game. Alex De Los Santos on the carry and watch this one develop. De Los Santos turns it into a 94 yard touchdown. Tarpons top St. Joseph Academy 44 to 21. Port Isabel is now 5 0 this season. Then it's the Sherryland Raptors taking on Bella. Lance Madden throws it up to James Cole, who just whips it away from the defender. Cole speeds away for an 87 yard touchdown. Sherryland pulls off Bella Lake to win a 47 touchdown. Here's something you don't see every day. This is Edinburgh North and Westlaco East. The Cougars looking for the TD, but the Wildcats pick the pass off in the end zone. But watch on the return a little contact. And the ball's free. Justin Guerra scoops it up, and he'll run it in for the crazy TD. Edinburgh North, a double overtime winner in this one over Westlake East, 36 to 35 in the final. That concludes our power plays of the week. Be sure to check us out at TexasFootball.com.